got an interview with one of our performers, um, Jesse Oliver, slam poet. Um, so tell us a bit about yourself, like what got you into slam poetry? Oh, I uh, got into slam poetry because I just, I liked writing and I always used to just like write to myself and um, I never really shared it with anyone but it was a good way to like just work through stuff and also figure out if I had stuff to work through. Um, and then I started like um, getting into like rap and stuff and then found like a freestyle way of saying it, found out that was called slam poetry. Um, showed a couple of friends, started doing some performances, and now I'm here. So Jesse, um, yeah, would you like to give us a taste of some of your poetry? I was a shy kid, from a strict home, so I had never known how to speak my mind or where to find it. I was handed the legacy of a pedigree dependency and a tendency to be seen but not heard, so my words became deliberate. Careless, callous, and calculated, I was interrogated, but I was never asked. My opinion was always last to be cast in the very existence they said was my own. But shy kids become shy adults. Adults who continue to believe the lies that they are told just so they can hold old controlled ideals. This feels wrong. And I couldn't keep it up for long. But this moment is now mine. You have assigned this time to listen to my frame of mind, so listen, pay attention. It's important what I'm about to mention. Shy kids still have the gift of voice and a choice to use and refuse the beliefs you've shown them for years. And if this hurts your ears, then good. Stay where you are. Hold on to your fears, stuck in a web that you've built of unwilling guilt and watch me achieve my hopes and dreams by sewing the seams of my outrageous extremes. Shy kids will find a way. Like that victorious day that that kid that once hid got off of the grid. And I dare you to ask me how he did. Wow, that's amazing. So do you think that, that slam poetry, um, for yourself at least, you know, has given like the, the queer community a voice? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. And that's why you find a lot of, you find a lot of minorities in the slam poetry realms, because they're usually people who have been, you know, told to be silent about something and they've got something to say and they just want to let the world know that they're there and that they exist and that they're going through these things. And I think it's really powerful being in the audience as well, like just meeting some of the people that I know through poetry, I've learned a lot about um, different lifestyles and getting a better understanding. And that's that's part of what influenced me as well to be open with my, my transness. Mm. Um, so that people know that I'm, I'm I exist, you know, yeah. like that's it. And it's like it's a it's a pretty magical scenario when you think yeah. about it, because these people have come to like listen to whatever I have to say. So that that in itself is like welcoming enough. So Jesse, so since you've been you know a performer and in the public realm, um, you know how open are you about your you know your, your life and your transition and that kind of thing? That's a good question because at first like. Um, when I first started writing poetry and I started going competitions and stuff, I had this sort of thing where I didn't really want to be like merited for being trans, like look at what this trans writer is doing and I wanted people to recognize me for this, like for the poetry that I was producing and I didn't I didn't want like I didn't feel like I wanted like a sympathy vote or anything like that. But um I went to uh the National Youth Writers Festival last year. Um I'm going again next week. But um, I hosted a panel about how the Australian literary community supports or doesn't support trans writers. And I learned a lot about how um, I think it's important for people to know that I'm a trans writer and I do um, sometimes make trans related work, but sometimes I don't. And I think we came to the conclusion that it's important when you are in the public eye to show everyone that there's no one way of being trans and that just because I'm trans doesn't mean like I'm always focused on my transition but um, yeah it's something that I now I'm quite comfortable with and I, I you know I like people to know yeah and it's also I guess like with slam poetry it's also about challenging the norm and challenging yeah. like I guess how you know the mainstream media and yeah. perceive you know yeah, trans exactly. people and there's a certain vulnerability about it too I couldn't I, I've realized I can't go out there and poetry is a very personal thing as well like I, I always thought that good poetry especially performance poetry is very emotive and about connecting with your audience and I can't go up there and hide parts of myself like you have to be completely there I guess and that's why I felt like last year's Transtastic was such an awesome opportunity because I felt comfortable and it opened this door to me performing as myself completely in its entirety, yeah. So, so thanks for having you on the couch, uh, Jesse, and um, look forward to seeing you at Transtastic 2016 at Connections this year. You're welcome, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay.